Hello everybody and welcome to Super Mario Galaxy 2. Hasn't been too long since we played Super Mario Galaxy 1, but I just could not get enough of this wonderful franchise and entry into the Mario series. This of course is the sequel to Mario Galaxy 1. It's basically more of the delicious decadence that the first game provides. So on this unspoken planetoid, we will once again be Mario and use that icon. Yes, we're quite the icon. So let's go ahead and get started with the great space journey. As you might notice, things are looking a little bit more modern. Hopefully you can appreciate that. I'm doing it for you guys. But first, some story. The entry to this game is very much a down scaled, diluted version of the first story from Mario Galaxy 1, the story that won so many awards. That's what Mario games are known for, after all. So let's go ahead and get a little peek into a letter from Peach. Dear Mario, would you like to share some cake? We watched the shooting stars meet me at the castle. Well, you know how much I love cake. Thank you, Sky Mommy. We'll go ahead and do that. We need to meet her at the castle. And the allure of cake definitely makes our pipe grow, so let's go ahead and traverse that way. So there's the this, this Star Festival. If you remember from the first game, it's back. This game kind of treats it like it never happened. It's essentially kind of a, a cover, a remix of game one with a little more polish. Or Polish if you have trouble reading. So here we go, another interaction with Aluma. Who only speaks in wingdings. It's a little confusing, I'd say. He's trying to alert us. We don't really know what he's saying. I can definitely relate. But apparently this Luma has taken a likening to Mario. And we'll hide inside his hat as done so in the first game. And will fill us with warmth. Which might be the Luma or that might be P. So who knows? Let's continue going. We'll be getting little hints from the Luma. He's kind of our NPC buddy. And once again, back are the star bits and coins, the collectibles from game one. You'll definitely want to keep an eye on both of those things. You'll need them. They are very useful for your future, especially star bits. I remarked on that a lot in game one, but you'll definitely want to pay more attention to that in game two. So heading to the Star Festival, looks like everything is in order, everyone's having a great time. Star bits are flying around, everybody's enjoying a little crystal. And, uh, doesn't look anything's wrong- oh. Huh. Well it appears that, uh, someone got to the party early before we were ready and finished setting up. That's rude. Don't you hate that? You're trying to plan a nice get-together and someone shows up before the party's ready to get started. And he brought Peach too? You guys have no etiquette. But apparently we're too late. We're too late. You're too late. Or you're early. Whatever. Same thing. So Bowser once again has stolen the power stars. And the Peach is in need of help. Surprising. Doesn't normally happen. And he's huge. That's what he said. Pretty gnarly. Kind of looks like Peach is singing us a little tune. And he wants to get a slice of Peach's cake, if you know what I'm saying. He's got a big old appetite. So if this seems familiar, if you're experiencing a little bit of deja vu, your brain is correct, your intuition is accurate. So here we go, everybody. Bowser has flown to the center of the universe with once again, powers that I don't quite comprehend. I'm not entirely sure how that's possible. But he did bring some meatballs. A little, a little burnt. Probably left them in the crock pot a little bit too long. That's kind of rude. But thankfully our Luma friends are here to help us out. Good question. So the agency has been provided by these Lumas. And we will be guided by our own master Luma. Thankfully, they'll be safe and sound inside our old smelly cap. 
So there we go. We're doing great. And once again, our Luma friends will sacrifice their lives to provide transportation. I really appreciate that. I mean, my friends don't sacrifice their lives to provide transportation for me. So clearly, these guys are a cut above. I really appreciate that. And this game kind of just dumps you into it. So this is the Sky Station Galaxy, the first star of the game. Kiwi Piranhas. Temper Tantrum. So let's go ahead and get started with star number one. This is important. And we're just going to get dropped right into the galaxy itself and learn that Bowser has stolen all the power stars. So we're on our very first quest here. We've never run into Bowser or had to collect power stars in any game ever before, so this is brand new. At least that's what the game designers want you to think. So this is Yoshi's house from Super Mario World, and he wants us to go around the outside and into his back door. So we can certainly do that, but first, let's grab a life. Let's get a life, okay? There are many in this game. You'll see that they are very abundant. You don't really need as many as they give you unless you're horrible at this game. As horrible as I usually am at this game, even I have found that the amount of lives are a little excessive, but it's rather a good situation. You know, you'd rather have too many than not enough. And in this game, coins are more than just healing items. So you'll want to be mindful of that in the future. There will be certain instances where collecting coins is going to be something that's very crucial for progress. But definitely prioritize star bits first. In the last game, star bits were relatively plentiful as they are here too. But you'll definitely need to have a lot of them because there's definitely going to be some thick old Lumas with some big old appetites. So keep that in mind. Thank you for reminding me. It's like you saved me, but you kind of suck at saving everything else. What are you doing? Okay, well that's kind of rude. I don't know if Yoshi consented to you getting into his stuff. Jeez, Luma, have some respect. So those fruit that you see there are the ones from Super Mario World, Yoshi's favorite snack. Are you someone's favorite snack, viewers? Comment in the uh, area where you do that. In the bottom of the, yep. Okay, so moving on, great. We're gonna try to take advantage of these enemies here and gather some early star bits. Star bits and coins are once again your collectibles in this game. However, there's a third collectible, which is brand new, that we're going to want to take advantage of. And you'll notice that it's a little bit trickier to find than your average run-of-the-mill star bit. And coin. So, dodge the Octumbas. I think that's what it said. Ooh, no. Okay, did I get it? Okay, I did. Great. So we'll let that life fall off into oblivion. We don't quite need all of them, thankfully. The game is pretty generous but if you go in here we can commit murder you can kill all the octumbas using the power star here and doing so gets you a metric butt ton of lives which is really great you can load up on them early in the game and then reset your file and then lose all of them immediately isn't that great so you really don't need them Full disclosure, they're not really that big of a deal. I have 12 of them now. Started with four, so I've been able to acquire eight additional lives beyond what I started with, so there's not really a whole lot of agency that requires the gathering of lives. You'll find that it's pretty reasonable in the amount that they give you. They're pretty generous. So no worries there. There's a lot of coins, too. In this case, this is just kind of for fun. In other missions, though, you'll want to be mindful 
and gather coins. You'll actually really, really want to get them, so just keep that in mind. And this is kind of fun. You'll do a little figure eight around that planet, land on this meatball. This first mission, very much a tutorial mission. It's a good way to get your feet wet. To see if you've still got the skills to pay the bills from the first Galaxy game. If you remember all of those moves. Yeah, so this game does not hesitate to really hammer home how many lives they want to give you. This is kind of a bit of a departure from older Mario games where getting lives is sometimes kind of tricky to come by, but in this one, they just want you to have a good cash time. Nice cash sash. Don't worry about those lives, but as you can see under the power star, there's a little outline, and that outline, my friends, is the Comet Medal. In this game, that's how Comets are handled. In the previous game, getting Comets was just kind of a happenstance thing. I don't remember exactly what triggers them, and you could move them around, but this game it's a little different, collecting the Comet Medals, one per galaxy, will get you access to a future comet that you'll be taking on once you hit a certain threshold. I don't quite know what that is off the top of my head. Off the dome. So we'll not worry about that, but here we go. We have the life shroom or the power shroom, whatever that's actually called. So instead of having three health, we get six. This is kind of run of the mill, standard fare. If you take three hits, you'll drop down to three HP instead of six, which is not as fun. So, okay, so that's just a demonstration of what it's like to take damage twice. Every time you take a hit, you lose an HP, but coins will replenish those. So coins have multi-purpose in this game. In the previous game, it was just to refill your health. In this one, it's actually a, an actual use of currency, which is great. So instead of talking about finances, we'll talk about our first boss of the game. This is... The baby Peewee Piranha. You can still use your star bits to unplug coins if you're into that. And this is very reminiscent of the Peewee Piranha enemy from Mario 1. Mario Galaxy 1, I should say. Mario Galaxy just. We wanna see what's cracking with him. Expose his bright red bottom. In doing so, he'll expose his, his juicy behind. And those are two words that should never go together. I think if you're describing anything besides some fruit or perhaps a pack of gushers as juicy, please stop. Because I hate it. All right. So he is hopping mad. Having a bit of a temper tantrum. Somebody's got a case of the terrible twos. Actually, I don't know if it's younger than that or older than that. I can't really tell. I forgot to study piranhaology in school. But murdering that infant gets us a power star. Heck yeah, here we go. First of many. I will tell you, there are at least 120 power stars in this game. Are there more? Who knows, you'll have to find out. Stick along for the ride. And somehow, gathering that power star from Pee Wee Piranha's temper tantrum, deposits us on this weird, empty planet. There's a captain's wheel, a bunch of Lumas, and oh my goodness, what is this? Hello? It has pants. Where? What is, is that how it wears pants? You ever seen those pictures of how dogs would wear pants? Would a dog wear pants on all four legs? Just the back two? <sighs> Who knew that pants wearing would be the biggest quandary of our day? But anyway, apparently the Lumas have been yapping about us to this large purple Luma. Makes me think back to the hungry ones from the first game. Hope he doesn't eat us. He looks friendly though. We brought him a power star, so I think he understands that we are not a foe. This is Lubba. He is the 
head of the Lumas, which I don't really know how that works because I thought it was Rosalina, but apparently uh, maybe he had he's consumed her. He has eaten her, and Rosalina is now inside of Lubba. So this is allegedly a spaceship, this planetoid that was knocked around by Bowser. It's a little rough shape, but, you know, it's a fixer-upper. It's just that the housing market nowadays is kind of rough, so... You know, we gotta really work on it. Not doing so great. Bowser really knocked us out of commission and took all of the stars. But he took Princess Peach. So it sounds like we both have some big problems going on right now. Maybe if we work together, we won't be able to power this spaceship, I think, without any power stars. So what are we going to do? I think a proposition is in order. Ayo! Lubba is from the Space Streets. That's what the kids say these days. So Master Luma has spoken on our behalf. He's essentially selling us out to Lubba. Thanks, Master Luma. So apparently now we have to engage in this symbiotic relationship because we are stuck here and we need to work for transportation. Sounds like indentured servitude. What a weird concept for a Mario game. But thankfully, Lubba is going to help transform our mode of transportation to something a little more hospitable. Introducing... One of the most hideous creations in all of Mario games. A false idol to our boy, Mario. The face ship. Here we go. Round of applause. Clap for yourself if you've got time. Don't spill your, your snacks. So Lubba has tried to win us over by creating the spaceship in our image. And he wants us to head out when we're ready. So let's go ahead and explore the face ship a little bit. See what we've got. It's got a little bit of gravity on it, which is kind of fun. There's star bits abound. It's a little barren, though. They've even keep kept things accurate to Mario's big schnoz. Is this spicy meat the ball? There's also little tutorial Lumas spread around. Also, they're kind of jerks. Um, let me play the game at my own pace. But yes, for now, this the face ship will remain relatively uninhabited. But that will change as time goes on, as we encounter new friends and have different experiences. So it looks like we're in good hands so far. And on the next episode, we're going to go and grab some more Power Stars. Thank you for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Super Mario Galaxy 2. And I'll see you next time. Bye.